to the Nerdy Cool da- Dad, Nerdy Cool Dad podcast. Uh, it's the 16th episode today, and uh, we're still going strong. What, I got a couple topics I want to talk about today, and the first one is, well, for me, it's No Tech Tuesday. So that means after work today, uh, no devices, nothing like that, unless uh, unless I'm using it to play music or something like that in the kitchen. And, uh, yeah, I think the wife and I are uh, going to make some homemade ravioli. So there you go. That'll be exciting. Then play some cards after. Um, you know, let me know what you guys, you know, if anyone does, else decides to follow suit and do some No Tech Tuesdays. Uh, I think it's a great way to just kind of relax and, and not watch uh, a copious amount of, uh, you know, useless TV at this point. I mean, I think you've gone through all the A material. So uh, that being said, I still can't get myself to watch that Tiger King show. I will at some point, I'm sure. But uh, I got close to watching it last night, but then I uh, I went for something a little bit more... Uh, uh, well, higher quality, I suppose. Uh, I, I'm watching Ozark Season 3. We'll watch the first episode tomorrow. Uh, so that was pretty exciting. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how that all pans out. Yeah, uh, today in my neighborhood is also Garbage Day. Um, and I can't help but think that garbage people, uh, whoever works the garbage trucks or whatever, must fucking hate everyone right now. Uh, when you're at home and you're decluttering and you're doing your spring cleaning and all that, and then it comes around like everyone on my streets got their... Oh yeah, it's also the first uh, first week of the year for uh, lawn waste and stuff like that. So everyone's got bags and bags of lawn waste and uh, every bit of garbage they can throw out right now. And um, yeah, so they, they probably hate everyone. So <laughs> what can you do? Uh, I mean, you know, it comes... Uh, it's just the way it is. They, they got to deal with it. So, um, yeah, I noticed they didn't take my rug today that the squirrels ate in my garage. But, but you know, you can't win every or, or uh, every victory, right? So um, I don't even know if I'm allowed to put out a big item each week I thought or every two weeks. I thought I was allowed to. Um, maybe that's not the case. So I have no idea. But, uh, yeah, uh, back to the garage with you and the squirrels can have at it for their nests because I got a squirrel living in my garage that scares the shit out of me every time I walk in it. Um, so that's fun. I got to deal with that this uh, this summer or spring. And um, yeah, you know, it is what it is. I don't in the, in the winter. I don't really care too much. You know, I don't really go in the garage. But uh, and I have a de- detached garage too. Uh, but uh, yeah, in the summer, I don't really want him uh, hanging around. Him or her or whatever it is. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> it is what it is. Uh, being a homeowner is definitely interesting, though, um, especially in these times. I've got, uh, uh, I've had to deal with a couple weird breakdowns of things that aren't even that old. Uh, about a month and a half ago or so, I had to replace a, a blower fan on my, uh, on my, uh, my furnace. Don't know anything about HVAC, um, but it was pretty straightforward. And uh, not that bad, actually. It was kind of reminded me of uh, building a computer because you got the uh, like the circuit board and you got to take out all the connections to it and, and all the sensors. And uh, I mean, it was a messy job, that's for sure. It's definitely dusty. Uh, hopefully no one's listening, but I definitely need to get my ducks clean. That doesn't mean you can call me right now. I don't want you in my house, uh, but I will at some point need those ducks cleaned. Um, <laughs> But even uh, last few days, I noticed my wa- my, sorry, my dryer was making weird noises, like a squealing noise. So I looked it up and tried to see what that might be the co- or what be, might be causing this. And I think it's the rollers. So I mean, again, I don't really have an option of uh, having a repair guy uh, come over. So um, I took to YouTube, figured out how to dismantle my washer or my dryer, and uh, I had at it. So, um, one annoying thing is there's a lot of flimsy plastic parts on these newer, um, like I've got a Samsung dryer and, uh, all these little clips are impossible to take off and I broke like three of them. I mean, they're not that important. I also somehow missed like four screws putting it back together. I don't know. I, I, I don't know what to tell you. Maybe they weren't needed. I, I mean, it was on like a plastic piece anyway, so it doesn't really matter, but uh, it was kind of interesting. And I think I found the problem, but I still need to get um, a better solution for it. 
Um, I it, it might be the bearing on the roller that needs to, or just replace the rollers altogether on the front. I know it's on the front, that's what I can tell, but uh, I don't have any proper lube or anything like that, so uh, I use some WD-40, seemed to do the job for a bit, and then it starts squealing again, I'm like, ah, shit, there goes my, uh, uh, my effort. <laughs> it took me like, a couple hours to sort that all out, but now going forward, I know how to disassemble it pretty quickly, I won't run into the same struggles I did uh, previously, so uh, to be continued, and uh, you know, another episode of what goes wrong in your house when you have no one to repair it for you. So there you go. Good times uh, ahead. Uh, knock on wood that uh, nothing else uh, goes too wrong over the next little while while I don't have the ability to get some help for it. So <laughs> it is what it is, right? Um, one thing I did point out yesterday, I was talking about, uh, I don't even know if it was yesterday. It was at some point. I, I, I can't keep track of what I say on any given day. But anyways, at some point I was talking about video conferencing and, uh, uh, you know, how these events can help, um, you know, maybe shift some of the, uh, some of the industries that are, that are focusing too much on face to face meetings. Um, I mean, there's so many opportunities here to cut down on time and, uh, you know, help the environment. Like if you're, in a larger company and you're flying out for every single meeting because it has to be face to face because you're a super important person. Um, maybe that doesn't need to be the case. Maybe we can make some changes going forward. I mean, the air is so clean right now uh, without all these uh, jets flying around all over the place. And it would be nice to keep that up. And, and, and believe it or not, it is a lot of the more old school industries that are very adamant about uh, a face-to-face -face meetings. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a, a, a plane uh, ride or anything like that to go meet them. I mean, oftentimes it's just driving all over the place to go meet your clients. And yeah, it's it's not 100% necessary. I've got theories on it. Like I used to work in uh, automotive tech for about three years and as you would imagine, it's a pretty old school uh, type of business. Um, you know, there's not too many young people owning car dealerships. Um, I mean, there are, of course, but not that many. And they're very adamant about face-to-face -face meetings. And, and don't get me wrong, you can accomplish a great amount in a face-to-face -face meeting. Um, but at the same time, when you think of all the effort put in, uh, of traveling there, making sure they show up on time, uh, making sure that they're, they're actually... Um, paying attention. I mean, it's it's interesting because a lot of people want to do those face to face meetings because because like I said, you get more accomplished and and you you build trust with people better. But what I've found a lot of times is you do these face to face meetings and um, either have one asshole who's want, needs to be the 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 alpha in the in the crowd and uh, you know everything caters to them. Or you have people pretending like they're they're in, uh, interested and in, in that they're listening, and then you just get a phone call and some email saying this doesn't make any sense. This is broken. That's broken. Whatever. I mean, it's I don't know. I'm on the fence. I do find. Uh, I mean, all I do is conference teleconferencing now, or not teleconferencing, video conferencing now. Um, I don't even have the option to meet my clients because they're all uh, in the U.S. and I'm not going out there to visit them. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I've gotten I, my ability to get things done is is pretty good. I mean, my efficiency is right up there and I don't really see the need for a face to face meeting. If anything, that would take up way more time and resources is just not worth it. Um, so I'm hoping that this whole COVID-19 situation gets people to kind of better understand what uh, technology can do for them, make their lives easier, make their teams run more efficiently and um yeah, we'll see. Uh, we'll see where this goes. See if uh, a lot of companies just feel like, okay, well, you know what, we got by doing things this way. Uh, let's let's keep doing it and, and see where it goes. Also, I have some clients that are uh, um, claiming that, uh, and I deal with like call centers and stuff like that. Um, we the company I work for does like a predictive uh, uh, dialer software. Anyways, 
Uh, some companies that have had to uh, scramble to get everyone to work remotely are, are reporting in that their teams work way more efficiently working remotely, which is interesting because it's kind of like a shock to them because maybe they're, they've got a little bit more of an old school business mentality and they had to scramble to get things uh, um, you know, up and running as soon as possible so they don't lose too much money. And then to un uncover something like this, it's like, okay, well, that's interesting. Um, we spend all this money having these big, uh, big offices or call centers and, and stuff like that. Maybe that's not something we need. Maybe once a month, if we want to do a face to face meeting, we book out some meeting space and we hold a, a, a big meeting. Then, um, there's so many opportunities, so many possibilities, right? So I expect companies when, uh, when everything's said and done to run a little bit more leaner or a little bit more efficiently, um, you know, I just don't see the, the need to have uh, these big bloated offices. It's just, for me personally, I think it's more of a, uh, I want to make sure I can keep my eyes on everyone and uh, and and uh, impose my uh, my presence on them and, and intimidate them. So, I don't know, maybe I'm, maybe I'm off key here, but, uh, and of course, this doesn't work for every industry. Um, you know, it's, uh, every industry is going to be different, but, uh, for what I see on a day to day to day basis, um, that's, you know, trending in the, in, uh, in the right direction. I mean, I work remotely anyway, so it really means nothing to me, but, um, yeah, the only thing that you miss that, uh, you know, having it in an office and in your typical setting is the, uh, the camaraderie of the, the company culture. Um, but at the same time, I could argue that a lot of uh, tech companies are, um, you know, they're really babying their their employees, like, uh, you know, lunches every day, some of them, uh, you know, uh, special events and, and things like that. And it's at the point where I don't even know that it's appreciated anymore. It's just more expected. So, oh, I went to this company. They didn't even have lunch every day. Well, what the hell is that? Like, lunch every day? Jeez. <laughs> I was lucky to get lunch once every couple weeks or so. Uh, is all I was used to, um, you know, from one company to the next, I, I, I've been to some that had, uh, you know, a fully stocked kitchen and, and, and stuff of that nature. Um, and like Nerf gun wars, cool stuff like that. But I mean, it's, it's ironic because a lot of that stuff is typically for your, um, your, 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 typically for like your bottom level uh, employees to keep them happy. You're not paying them nearly as much. Maybe they're right out of school and culture is a big deal uh, to them. And then, I mean, the people that are, uh, you know, middle management and, and, and higher, I mean, really don't have time to participate in stuff like that. I mean, go to the kitchen and get some snacks and stuff, but uh, that's about it. Um, you know, you're too busy to, to be playing foosball or ping pong or, or playing video games and doing this, that, and the other. But, um, also, I mean, a lot of this stuff is geared towards the developers. You want to give them breaks because if they're coding for an hour or two at a time, they need to release and and uh, just get their mind off of it. So, you know, it's catered to, to, to certain people for sure. But, uh, you know, that's just uh, the way it is. Um, God help you if you miss Taco Tuesday, right? So <laughs> it's interesting. And, you know, obviously the bigger company, the bigger the company is, the more they're expected to uh, give back to their employees. And uh, I'm not saying this is a bad thing necessarily. It's just, I think long-term uh, expectations are, are being thrown out of whack. And when you have a crisis like we have right now and they're cutting budgets, well, if you don't have your Taco Tuesdays um, and uh, your, your beer cart Fridays, well, it's not the end of the world. I think we'll get through it. Uh, if you're wondering what my shirt is, it's a uh, octopus. It kind of looks weird with just like a pink head popping out throughout the uh, uh, the filming here. So uh, I figured I'd clear that up in case you thought it was something weird. Uh, which it, I guess it is kind of weird. But uh, <laughs> uh, last thing I wanted to cover today actually was uh, just, you know, my typical observation of what it must be like at the White House right now. Uh as we all see on a daily basis, um, it's just ridiculous. <laughs> That's all it is. Uh, all the things going on, the greed going on. And then like Trump's administration having to like stand next to him during all these uh, uh, press conferences, so obviously to show that we're a strong leadership team and uh, COVID-19 is not going to affect us and all that, which is weird because Tr Trump apparently is a total... Uh, germaphobe. So I'm actually quite surprised he's uh, 
He's willing to take these measures and then just having to stand there, listen to his bullshit every time, like with a straight face. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know. Um, I was listening yesterday to um, Bill Burr. He's uh, someone I, you know, I, one of my mentors and something I, uh, someone I actually um, sort of uh, structure my show around. And uh, he was going on about uh, Mike Pence and like that guy must be uh, uh, like, uh, I don't know, have nerves of steel to be able to be Trump's vice president and just like be that straight edge guy who doesn't say anything out of line and, and stays with the, uh, the policy no matter what. Like that's uh, that's like a, a Waylon Smithers type uh, character, in my opinion, it's uh it's interesting if you're, yeah, if you know what I'm talking about. The Simpsons, obviously, I'm a huge Simpsons buff. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, I would, I would just cringe having to stand up there with that guy. And, uh, uh, I don't know. I don't know. What I'm really, like, the cynical part of me is really looking forward to the election this year. Because we all know that Trump is going to say that he did a fantastic job and no one in the history of the United States have dealt with a, a situation like this and they got it under control and uh, under the, uh, the time limit that uh, all the experts uh, were suggesting. And how does he know so much about this? Well, he just he, he really gets this stuff. He likes it. He's a genius. He's he's way smarter than the average person. Um Every piece of bullshit you can think of is going to come out. And the thing is, like, I don't know. I think it's a crapshoot because I really don't think Joe Biden's a very good con candidate anyways. But that's what you're up against. A, a giant douche and a turd sandwich once again. Who would have thought? Politics, right? Um, so, I don't know. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll continue to see how this reality TV show uh, pans out. And uh, that's that. Uh, that's the rest of my show for today. Make sure that you subscribe and, uh, you know, check out some other footage that I have going on. And uh, be sure to stay the fuck home.